So I'm like, oh, you're gonna die. This is Kenton Claremont from Train to Hunt, and you're watching The Great Bowman. This is the only thing that's got me anywhere is hard work. That's yeah. all I got. I'm, I'm not the best shot. I'm not anything. So all I know is to work hard. So yeah. I can't really back off of it because that got me to the dance. Yeah, yeah. So I'm just going to keep riding it. I'll just keep – all I can do is give all I got. Yeah. Call, calling you fat and the macronutrient fat. fat. That's we right. We should have called it, like, oil. Or we should have called it awesome. Yeah. <laughs> when did you know you really liked Cameron? We became buddies, like, immediately. Like Once right off the bat? Friends. Yeah. Well, well, I had him on my podcast. It's the first time I met him. And he brought me a, a Hoyt bow, so how could I not love him? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I did. What did you think when when that happened? I thought, I made it. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I yeah. thought I finally made it. Let's get it. <laughs> it no, let's, I am not let's, joking. Let's I do not talk with my hands. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> I do not. <laughs> with my hands? My hands? What? I just Randy Black not Eagle. Randy that's Black it. Eagle. Boom. That's, that's, my that's how we roll. Just drop <laughs> the mic and walk away. <laughs> Let's do a Pulp Fiction night and Kill Bill one two and no that I don't, would haunt I, Gary's yeah. brain for life. Don't watch Kill Bill, Gary. Yeah. Or thou, the night of th what's the one Rob Zombie won the thousand? I know which one you're talking yeah, about. That one was really disturbing. Yeah, at an epic level. On this episode of Gritty Bowman, Aaron Snyder and I are in British Columbia at Jeff Lander's Redneck Compound bow hunting for black bear. Aaron with his Hoyt Buffalo recurve and I hunting with my Hoyt Defiant. This is actually the second podcast in a three-part series. If you want to check out the first podcast in this series, you can go back to the Gritty Bowman podcast library and look up episode 148. Jeff Lander owns Primitive Outfitting. With affection and utmost respect, Aaron and I refer to Lander's place as the Redneck Compound. Truth is, Aaron and I had an awesome time on this hunt. We made a film of this hunt called Back to Traditions, which you can watch on our YouTube channel. Aaron and I successfully harvested black bears on this hunt. And on this podcast, part two of the series, Aaron tells the story of his bear hunt in detail. We are joined by Jeff and our friend and guide, Gary Hilsher. Enjoy the show. Stand up, fall back. We got to do the trust fall. Trust Hello? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> well, no, I had it on one minute because I always forget to turn it off we'll when my Brian battery start. dies. So it's disabled. We'll start Ryan off the top yeah. of the deck. Whoops, sorry. Boom. Fo following. Boom. Fall away. Well. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I, I, think we're, I, think we're, I think we're all dialed. I still got my mosquito bug. <laughs> Quit itching it. Uh, we'll all I kind of wanted to do was just sit down since I got to the house. Stop staring at me, Swan. <laughs> Shampoo is better. It keeps well, the hair like a clean. Frankenstein thing outside. Is that head. a train? <laughs> don't yep. don't look, don't look. Make sure you look towards us. <laughs> <laughs> That's perfect. Let's oh. rock this. <laughs> All right, we're ready. <laughs> Can I do the podcast like this? Think that's worse than the bug bite or better? I'm gonna buy some pictures off them. I've got a yeah. short. I got. I ride a short bus. Thank you. No, you're not beautiful. You're wonderful. Have you seen his pictures of me? They're gorgeous. No, I can only imagine. He's going to Photoshop them. He's going to have to really Photoshop. Ready. Red team, go. Blue team, ready, go. Okay, folks, we're back. Back from an epic hunting accomplishment by uh, none other, th other than uh, the Snitter. Yep, killed a bear, only took two arrows. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, we we took off last night uh, our, with our illustrious guide Gary, and uh, got after some bears. And uh, Aaron, Aaron got lucky. Really, um, tried life. Uh, I'm gonna be no vegetarian for me. I'm making beef stew, just <laughs> well bear stew. <laughs> scoot, scoot that mic up into them whiskers. You told me not to do that. No, I panicked. So tell me. Uh, <clears throat> I don't even remember what we were talking about yesterday, but we're going to get right into this bear hunt. Mostly because my memory card is about to die on my thing, so we've got to wrap this up in 24.25 minutes. So we spot the bear in across the road and took off up into the bur a burn, and um, we uh, these guys started predator calling, and uh, I guess I got 21, 24. Brian's got it on video. I got yeah. close. 
And, well, when uh, he first ran across the road, because we were just driving up to this burn to glass it, we're, we're, we're heading up there, and he runs across the road. You know, he's out there pretty quick. Gary knew right off that it was a boar, but we weren't sure how big it was. We're kind of like, well, he's, I mean, would you say, Gary? A bear. Yeah, a bear. Yeah, but a turn out to be a little better than a, a bear. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I just, for, you know, five and a half foot, I was going to shoot because I got two tags as well. So I get up there and it's, um, I don't know, 22 degree angle or something of the stock. And it was probably 300 yards ish, would you guys say, up the hill? Yeah. yeah. And uh, the, the grass was like knee high to a giraffe. It was tall. And, uh, it was funny because on the way up, I'd ranged it a few times at 60 and at 50, and uh, it kept going through my mind. And, and something you've said, Jeff, multiple times was that with a traditional bow, your hunt starts where it stops with a compound. And as I'm ranging, thinking, I could have shot you many times by now with my compound. I was like, he is right, because I got to 24 <laughs> yards, and I still couldn't shoot it. I couldn't have shot it with a, a compound either, but it definitely was cooler because I got super close but all i could see with his ears and its head well then um i just walked off and it kind of scooted and so i thought man it, it must have winded me so i walked all the way back down the hill and uh brian's like i can still see it and i was like huh i wonder how high it is you know and i'm thinking it's three four hundred you know yards above where it was and that went on for like 30 yeah, seconds. Yeah, dude, I'm like, dude, there's that tree right there. It's right there at the first line of willows or whatever. So he sticks <laughs> his arm out, and his arm's almost parallel to the ground. And I'm like, oh, I can, that's low. I can kill that. And it was right back. Yeah, it was right back where it was. So I took off back up the hill again. These guys kept predator calling. And uh, my initial approach was a full-on frontal assault. <laughs> and that got, <laughs> I got about 55, 60 yards. Nah, it's probably 50 yards from it. And I just couldn't. And the wind was good the whole time. It was blowing blowing in your face the whole time. And I was being plenty quiet. I mean, it knew something was going on, but it didn't know exactly. He kind of was just sitting back there and just looking at the predator call and kind of chilling. And you could see him too, Uh, Gary. Oh, yeah. It was cool. And I'm kind of like a fat ninja, so I had that going for me going up the hill. And uh, all I could see was its ears and its head, and then it stood up, and it was like full broadside, and then it was just sitting there looking, and I'm like, man. So I had to assess the situation and uh, <laughs> noticed there was a creek to my left. So I dropped all the way back down the hill, came over to the left, and came up the, the creek drainage, which was perfect. Yeah. And I, uh, I got up to where I thought I should be, and I looked over, and I could see him, but I still didn't, I didn't have a shot. So I'm like, man, I got to get him get him closer. I still can't shoot this freaking thing. And uh, so I started to... Uh, well, first I got my crap together because I didn't want it running right at me and not having it, you know, ready to go. So I started like mouse squeaking, mouse squeaking, which I can't read with your mouth. Now. Yeah, with come my on, mouth. dude, let's hear it. It's perfect. <laughs> it's beautiful. And it worked because it was like boom straight to me. And these guys are watching; they don't know what. Yeah, I'm is filming going this on. thing, and I see the bear. And every now and then he'd look where Aaron, where I thought Aaron was putting his stock on him, and then. Gary and I would kind of ramp up. Gary would ramp up his predator calling, and the bear would like look back where the predator calling was coming from, which was the opposite direction. And he'd seem to forget about Aaron. And it worked pretty well for quite a long time, just keeping him distracted. You know, well, I had to make nineteen approaches on this thing, <laughs> so it's probably good you kept it distracted because I could not figure out. I mean, looking like assessing what was in front of me, what I could hide behind, and log jams and everything else, and there was just getting close. Is yeah. a, on the front wasn't going to work, so I got on the side, and uh, he was close. I mean, he was, well, once you started the mouse squeaking thing, oh mother! It was Pearl, like I was, was like, coming. he's walking right to him, I think, because he just locked yeah. on and just went straight. Which was, he had been looking kind of here, you know, down, and you guys were over here, and all of a sudden, I'm over here, way to his left, and he was like 42, 38 yards, something. I he was not overly far away, but not a shot I wanted to take. And I started mouse squeaking, and I mean, he was like, boom. And he started coming. I'm like, oh, this is going to (laughs) work. And he came in an opening, and I didn't have a good shot. And I couldn't mouse squeak to stop him because I was already mouse squeaking. (laughs) Like, well, crap. So he came over, and he got on this big log direct, like right above me and just haunches up and looks down. And I was like, I'll just shoot him on a a frontal shot. And at this point, how far away was he? I thought he was around 20-something, but he was a little farther than that. I Was it probably 31 yards from where yeah. I am? He wasn't. 
So I fired off one arrow, but it was a good shot. I, uh, you know, three, four seconds through my full execution, clean release, and landed right at its feet. And he kind of and looked around. I thought I hit him in the foot, and he's kind of like, so he turned broadside, and I had another arrow knocked already. And after having a, since the shot, the first shot wasn't like a flailing shot. I had a pretty good idea of where to aim the second shot. I, I smoked him the second shot, but I thought I was farther back than I should have been. Well, you guys had no idea what the hell was going on. <laughs> and uh, Well, on the <laughs> viewfinder, I said to Gary, I'm like, I think he shot him. I think he just yeah. shot him. Or you missed him. Yeah, which I actually did both. But he, so, but he jumped. The, but the miss, he doesn't even... On the yeah, camera, yeah. on the miss, I just see him like look at the, his feet, like at the log, like what was that? Well, what was what was funny is the entire time because um, I haven't showed you the photos, Jeff, but where I set up, you couldn't have designed a better recurve position. There was two bushes, and I was right between two bushes, and I had a log across. So when I when I shot, I don't that bow's so quiet. You shoot something with a compound, especially a bear, they don't hang out to be like, hey going on i mean he was just like hmm was that a branch that broke and so the second shot when i hit him was pretty much mid mid body yep. and uh i could see him bleeding already so i got up on the log and of course i don't have enough bug juice on i'm getting eaten alive and hey wake out that uh, bug spray yes. what's that broadhead that's the cutthroat broadhead from rocky mountain specialty Keep so this one's the one that spins as it goes in yeah well, dude, a little bit of blood. There's a ton, it's actually. Oh, there's a ton of blood on the ground, but. Yeah. These mosquitoes are out of control, man. <laughs> Welcome to British Columbia. You've got bites all over your head and face. Oh, dude, it's bad. What time is it? 8.30. I'm scared it's going to rain. I got smashed mosquito guts on this. I try to point back to Gary to, that I'm like, I hit it about mid-body. Well, you thought I was saying I shot under it because we're, at that point, probably 450 yards apart. And uh, You know what I mean? Out into the open again. He said he shot underneath it. Huh? He said he shot oh. underneath it. Dang it. Yeah, you on the camera, I heard, like, you know, you showed me, you're like, oh, dang it. Yeah. Well, Gary's I'm like, like, he shot under it, he shot under it. I'm, I'm like, dang it. Come on, guys. So they come up. Gary the optimist. And uh, <laughs> I, I think guys. it was Brian. I'm like, he's he's like, whatever, whatever. I said something, and I'm like, there's blood all over. And he's like, oh, you hit it? And I'm like, oh, yeah, I hit it. And I definitely hit it, 100%. And, I mean, I was on that log, yeah. and that log was just covered in blood the whole way up. And I hit it with that uh, cutthroat broadhead, and... We found that broad. I couldn't find my, my Yeah, we're looking for the arrow up there for 10 or 15 minutes. Can't There's find it. Blood in the grass, blood on the logs. And um, so Gary runs back down. He's like, hey, I'll go get some bug juice and water in my pack, you know, basically all my gear, and I'll come back up. Just wait. And so I'm just walking back up to Brian, and there's my arrow 15 yards past the bear, blew straight through it. And we looked this morning. It blew through one rib, cracked the other one. It was like six inches buried into a... A rotten log. All right, Aaron. Where'd you actually hit this thing? In this region here, which isn't too different from where I shot, but a little bit. So I had a steep angle. What would you say? It's like 25 degree? Yeah, yeah 25 degree angle going up. Um, I thought it was about here, but actually this kind of stretched out. So it went in here, which caught probably the back side of the onside lung. And then it acts over here is about perfect dead center in the middle of the offside lung and that's with the cutthroat which is like an inch and an eighth cutting diameter broadhead what's crazy and you can see down here the hole in the hide the arrow was buried six inches deep into a log 12 15 yards past the deep which is why we couldn't find it past the bear and i hit rib on both sides in fact that rib's broken there i don't know if i actually hit rib on this side but it did some damage it uh, yeah. definitely blew through it. But There's it was a little blood. further back than than typically. Well, Gary uh, kept saying, You're, if you, you can shoot them farther back than you think, farther back than you think. And I've shot lots of bears, but I always shoot basically right into the front, not into the front shoulder, but cutting the front shoulder to the back side. And that's about center of, cent, you know, center line of body. 
Yeah. Right here. And he was the, right. It died quick. It died quick, <laughs> man. You can... Sh- I For some reason, I didn't think it was... The, the kill zone was as far back as that. I will say... It's, it still exited really up, close to the up front. People say that a mortally wounded animal won't go uphill, and this is an example... Yeah. It went straight uphill for 75 yards and uh, and died, which doesn't happen very often. But with this bear, it, it went straight uphill the whole way. You good? Yeah, go to the offside, the other, and point at it. Yeah, it's pretty far forward. You uh. And it was covered, and um, I smelled it, and I thought I smelled some intestines, but you smelled it, and you're like, no, we we should be good. And uh, One of the things that you had mentioned that you were worried about was shot placement. Yeah. Maybe it was uh, you kind of went center of body, center of center. I thought it was behind center of center. But you thought you hit a little far back, and one thing that you said, Gary, was um, you found that you can actually shoot a little further back than guys think they can on a bear. And, and this definitely was true because <laughs> I'm always trying to get real up close and tight and low to the shoulder. But um, yeah, you want to be back. The, the problem with the stick bow, and one thing you've said, Tom Clum has said, ingrained in me, is pick a spot. Well, it's a giant black spot, and so I'm like, the bear's just a big black blob. center of spinner. And when I drew back, I'm like, okay, four inches front of center and center, just lay it in there. And right when I shot, he kind of had moved and. Which was another confusing thing because he kind of made a, a U with his body when it hit. And I was like, well, I might be center of center, but I'm definitely four or five inches right of where I wanted to be, which I was, but it, it died. I mean, well, it exited a good, it was quartering away a little bit, so it exited up behind closer to the shoulder. And it was funny because the entry hole is low and the it how, shows how steep it was. The entry hole is low and the exit hole is pretty high. Yeah. Um, when we looked at it this morning, uh, but we didn't go 75 yards, and it was piled up in the bushes. And uh, it's it's cool for me. Um, well, like you say it all the time, Jeff. I mean, and you're a very devout traditional shooter. You shoot a longbow. You don't really realize when you take advantage of the compound like I have of how much cooler it is when you have to get close. Because I can tell you now – I would have shot that bastard to 60 yards without blinking an eye with the compound. I'm like, hey, everybody, I got it. Come on up. Where I'm like at 60 yards, and I'm thinking, I'm not even halfway there yet. And now, I mean, I can shoot pretty proficiently at, at 30 with the trad before 40, really. And even at 30, I'm like, I'm going to get a little closer to make sure I don't become the crippler. Because I, was, I just shot at 30, and I didn't take it because I was like – 20 just seems so much easier <laughs> so it's a whole for me a whole different ball game because before it's i could shoot it farther well, away where this i actually have to hunt and, one, one thing i joke about you know and the clums had mentioned you'll be surprised how many animals you kill with your second arrow and uh i joke you need the first arrow to gauge distance so well, you can shoot like, with the second it's arrow. like <laughs> artillery you don't fire for effect <laughs> Out the gate, you you kind of fire in the cheap stuff first to figure out where you need to hit. I was just, I believe in fair chase hunting. I wanted the bear to have a fair chance, so I fired a spoiler. <laughs> just let it know, hey, I, I may kill you. I'm just letting you know now. But no, after that first shot hit, I knew immediately what to do on the, the second shot. And then I did execute a good shot, but in the heat of the moment, you know, it isn't beat. It's not quite second nature exactly where I should aim as there's a, Six foot plus bear standing be, be, twenty yards over my head, looking at me. Be honest, like when you shoot the first time and you missed, what went through your mind? I was like, "Snitter, <laughs> all of this work and you shot it in the foot? <laughs> Are you stupid?" And I, I was just thinking, "Wow!" But I mean, as I'm thinking that, I'm reloading, thinking I'm going to shoot you with another arrow immediately. And he stood there the whole time, and he didn't know. How confident were you in the second shot? Hundred percent. I knew I'd hit it the second one. <laughs> First, if now if I would have just plucked the string and collapsed like a champ, I wouldn't have had any idea. But I that first, well, you knew your shot execution was so good that it was really a a, rain, a yardage thing. I just needed. And now that you higher. knew how high, how far away he was, you could move it up and you and nailed I, him. I didn't. I shoot three under. I didn't use my point on, but mm-hmm. just physically. I mean, you know, you feel it. And uh, 
the uh, just talking with Jeff and the Clums and everyone else on all of this, if I would have made a bad shot, I would have had no idea where to shoot second one. But I mean, I three to four seconds, I executed perfectly. And the reason I knew I, I executed, when I shoot a bad shot, I do this and I come out. When I was done, I was basically exploded out and my right hand was about at my shoulder. I don't have perfect form. It didn't matter. I hit by its feet, but I knew immediately, like, you're going to die on the second arrow. I about got a third arrow off at it. If it wouldn't yeah. have hopped in the hole, it would have got another one stuck into yeah, it. Yeah, he hopped in the hole and kind of stood there for a while. Well, and I couldn't see exactly what was... I first, when he hopped in the hole, I thought he was dying. Yeah. But then I saw him walk away, and I'm like, he didn't die. But, Aaron, you got to understand, I mean, that second shot that you took, that's where a lot of people um, that shoot... A lot of traditional guys... You know, they shoot targets and they shoot targets and they shoot targets. But when it comes down to shooting animals, they, they falls apart. Mm-hmm. Okay, so the fact that you even knew what you did wrong versus a guy who shoots or gal and Blacked no out. clue. Exactly. That, that's a good sign. That means mm-hmm. that, uh, that all your practice came, came together. But you're going to have a lot of people giving you advice. Uh, yeah. Who have very few animals <laughs> on the ground. <laughs> Yeah, and I, I think that's a good uh, that's a good sign that you actually can remember that because most can't. No, and I remember it. And I've had, um, not that I'm a great trophy hunter, but I have had ice in the veins for a while where I haven't really crapped my pants with a compound. But you don't a, 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 a recurve is brand new ball game, right? It, it's a stick bow. So, but I, the one thing that I literally came to anchor and I felt my hand right in the cheek, like I like it, and I felt like expansion completely. That feather touched my nose, and boom, I shot by its feet. But I knew everything. <laughs> I knew I'd ever done everything right. But I can't. It is hard for me to explain. It there is a reverence about hunting with a stick bow, a connection that's nothing like I could have explained before. Because I always just shot when I got. I mean, if I thought I could hit it, I'd shoot. If I got close, whether that be eighty or fifty, I would just shoot. Where with this, twenty-one, twenty-four yards, little ears, and I'm like, huh. Still can't shoot it, <laughs> so I had to get closer. But patience paid off too. But in fairness to our compound brothers and sisters, we don't let them shoot over forty here. Really. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> we yeah. Don't. Well, Gary told me that too, because obviously, I'm thinking it. It's not like we're having a play by play of what I'm thinking in my mind. You know, Gary was later on and told me the same thing. Um, you know, shots like that because I, I had said, you know, sixty, I could have just shot it. And Gary's like, and he told me he's like, we we don't let people shoot that you know that distance whatever mostly because you guys never know your clients and that's right you can say i can tell you all day long or i can show you on the the target i can shoot 100 yards that doesn't mean i won't <laughs> it running down both legs punch the trigger and shoot it in the foot um but keeping that aside it was very 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 cool experience for me to be with you primitive guy guy that's helped me out a ton you know with the transition Obviously, Brian, my partner, and then Gary, I've heard about you forever through the Lancasters. It was it was pretty cool how it all happened. Plus, we got two stocks on the same bear and killed it on the second one. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and it's, uh, I think it's pretty neat that you're able to, to, to get up there and um, get it done with a traditional bow. We were talking about this earlier. You might have a ton of experience. A guy might have a ton of experience hunting, or, but whenever you take on a new weapon – or something you're not familiar with, or like we talked about, Gary, we were talking about guys who hunt primarily from a tree stand, and they hunt whitetails, and all of a sudden, for the first time in their life, they're on the ground sneaking up on an animal, and there's a whole other level of of nerves and stuff that take over, and how easy it is to black out, just to pull back and then just see red and shoot, you know, and not really pick a spot, not really go through the your, your shot sequence and, and that sort of thing. Well, I can tell you on the stock, and, and I'm not an expert. I've only shot one animal. Well, I shot a turkey, and that doesn't count. One animal with the <laughs> recurve, but my situational awareness on the stock is way bigger than it is with a sti- with the compound because I'm, like, looking at lot. Can I make it over that? Because uh, it's 60. You can climb right over anything. That log jam's like 18, 20 yards from that bear. There's no way my fat ass is getting over that log jam. I got to look at something else. And that's what I was thinking the whole time I'm yeah. going up. I'm like, can I get around that? Do I got to Planning your stock, you've got to like be a lot more methodical and a lot quieter. And uh, I'm not saying compound hunters are bad at that. It's just with me specifically, I didn't 
ever have to take advantage of my stalking ability as much because my shooting ability compensated for that. Where yesterday when I got pinned down a frontal assault, trying to take a frontal assault, I mean, I literally immediately I'm looking around and I'm like, okay, get in the creek bed. I can walk right yeah. up. I just pulled the mouse thing right out of my ass because I ran out of options. I got up there. I'm like, well, I guess I'll just start squeaking. Maybe he'll come over and it and it worked. So, which is ironic because while we're pulling uh, Aaron's bear off the hill, <laughs> right below <laughs> us is another bear. And Gary's like, "There's a bear. There's a bear." He looked like a pretty good bear from on the hill. So they're like, "Brian, go go kill it," you know. So I ran down, get my bow out of the truck, and go after this bear down there. And uh, I get to like 50 yards on the bear and I'm ranging him and checking him out. And you guys are predator calling up on the hill and keeping him occupied. He's looking up there. The wind's not good. He kind of keeps looking my way. But uh, I'm sitting there and I decided he didn't quite have the size I wanted. He looked a little young, maybe even a sow. I couldn't tell. But uh, based on what he looked like, I just spent like a half hour staring at Aaron's bear, getting a good image of what that bear looked like, his size. And in this bear, I'm looking at it and I'm like, yeah, it's a lot not quite as mature so um, but i'm like i'm gonna do the uh i'm gonna play around with this bear why not do a little um mouse squeak we'll just do a little <laughs> and then see if this bear comes in so these guys are predator calling and the bear's looking up there but he's got his nose in the air and he heard some noise over where i was at because he kept looking my way and then he looked back up on top of the hill so i'm like okay well i'll just do a little mouse squeak see what happens so i do what aaron did and instead of the bear coming right over to check it out, the bear turned and booked it. <laughs> he was gone. That's funny. And so uh, I think, you know, in each of those, you you keep, you keep you got to read the situation, you know, best you can and, and uh, try to uh, – that bear that we were – obviously he was really into the predator calling. Yeah. He just couldn't leave. You know, you spooked him earlier. He looked like he went into the willows, and then next thing you know, he's like poking down through the trees, looking down the hill like – I came back what, after you came back down after the initial stalk. I think what saved me on on that one is he never could see see me or smell you. Or smell me. Well, definitely, yeah, that's a huge one. If he smelled me, and I didn't know if he caught like a tail, just a just a touch Some of my wind, or, or yeah. Well, I didn't know. I just knew I could see him walking up the the hill, and I didn't want to with the compound again. I can push a lot and get away with it. I didn't want to. The stick bow, I'm not going to make some kind of bum rush straight up the hill breaking sticks and still get a shot. So I came back down, and it worked out. You saw him, and it uh, it was cool. It's one of the coolest things I've ever done, um, and I've hunted a lot. And it was, it is just different, and not like on the high and mighty horse at all. <laughs> it is just different than hunting with a compound. The achievement, the practice, you know, the... It's it's been huge, and I, I mean I can't thank all of you guys enough uh, for the hunt up here, or you for Jeff for the help. Simple things like the my feathers going flat, and you're like, oh, you just steam them up. I would have never thought of that, <laughs> never ever, because the, when the feathers get wet and they they flatten out, you just well, I just put them on like the you know my little stove out in, the, in my my you know tarp or whatever, and they pop right back out. Things like that, you don't get. Over time, you got to learn it, and I don't know that, but um, yeah, I, I just I, I'm never speechless, so I can't say that. But I am super pumped up to uh, to get it done. And you're only as good as your last shot, <laughs> so thank God my last shot I killed something because uh, <laughs> I want to make sure and try to continue this and not become the crippler with that recurve. I want to make sure I kill everything I shoot at. Yeah, what do you think, Jeff? <laughs> I think it's good. That's a good thing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Man of many words. So you, how long, we talked about this before, how long have you been shot, how long have you been a trad guy? Uh, 84 is when I started kind of messing with it, but probably since 87 Yeah, is when I didn't turn back, so yeah. Now when I switched, what were you thinking when I <clears throat> swapped well, over? If you watch uh, what you do, social media, it seems like a lot of people, it seems to be the popular thing right now. Yeah, a lot of people are are doing that, which is great. I mean, as a somebody who shoots that, it's very cool to see. You know, um, hopefully the the expectations. I guess I don't know. You, your expectations are high, and that's good. But uh, sometimes it's it's tough, and and you will wound. You know, and yeah. that happens, and and how you react to it will will determine how you go forward. But uh, no, I thought it was cool. Yeah. 
Yeah, I should have uh, bought stock in Hoyt before you did that. <laughs> <laughs> it's amazing wow. how connected you don't have to be connected to a compound like you do a stick bow. And we were ta- you were giving me crap about it yesterday. Yeah. But I have to be, I got to have a, a, a very in depth. Well, I've got four of the same bows and I am connected to one. That one bow. In fact, Danny Clum wrote it in Sharpie, the one. I just shoot that bow better. Well, one thing I was going to say is I think you have to be in really, like, the amount of effort it took to switch and all the time that you've invested at the archery range and all the education that you've acquired from the clums and from Jeff and so on, all of that stuff took a considerable amount of effort to become proficient, to be able to shoot, all that stuff. And so for it to culminate in success like this, it's just it's got to feel good. You know, yeah, it's, just, it's an achievement. It is. It does feel good. And I've got a lot of support. Um, my buddy Dave Ziegman, um, well, he's the one that beats me at the tournaments, I hate to say. I mean, there's other guys that beat me, but he beats me. I mean, he beats me like a rented mule. Um, <laughs> but my buddy Paul, um, I haven't talked to Paul in a while, but Paul it was a huge help. The thing is, is um, not to give false hope, you have to practice a lot with good form <laughs> as much as you can and seek help if, if you need, because you're not going to grab... Frank the Tank is a good example. You can't just grab a bow and fling a few arrows and expect to kill something with a stick bow. you got to practice a lot. And uh, th- that bear, like, minus a miracle, or if you guys were able to huff it in and bring one in, I, you know, being proficient at 20, 25 yards is, is, I would say, is a good thing. You know, after that, it's up a personal choice. And for me, I can shoot on most days really well at 30 to 40, but if I can get him within 20 to 25, I know I can kill him. And out, that's important for me. Yeah. Out of curiosity, Jeff, how many animals have you killed with the second arrow versus the first arrow? Ooh. <laughs> you know it's a lot when it starts with a ooh. Yeah. yeah. No, that, that's, yeah. I would. I find that 30%. fascinating. <laughs> I find that fascinating because, you know. That bear had no idea. No idea. It's like, it's just like this silent arrow. Like you could fling it and they don't spook. Well, uh, see, uh, I've had it where I've missed them. And it's on the other side of them, and the wind's blowing to them, and it, with with bears especially, and they kind of sprint, stop, and look back at the arrow, and now they're half, you know, they're ten half yards the under looking back at that arrow when you shoot them again. Wow, mule deer as well. Yeah, well, Tom Senior, um, I think they said he was called three arrows for a while. <laughs> he killed three bulls in like four years on his third arrow, and he told me he goes, "There's many things you're going to find out about yourself and about trad shooting." One of the things you're going to find out soon is you can get a few arrows off at animals with a trad bow. Don't give up after the first shot. And um, I think you told me that too. You're right, because that first shot, even though I was kind of, you know, cussing myself internally, the moment I released and saw it hit the ground, I went straight for the quiver and loaded it back up because I was like, he's not moving. And uh, it actually helped me because he turned straight broadside on the second shot. So, you know, the biggest thing... um, you know, the shot, we weren't sure how far back it was, but uh, it was a super cool experience. Good confidence builder for me, uh, too. And, I mean, the thing is, is with with all of this, yeah, I learn every day, every minute. Well, we showed up here, and I was shooting like crap, not very well. Uh, that first like, day, I was a little worried. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I was jet lagged. I just wasn't shooting that good, but right before we left, um, I shot three arrows at... 30 yards and they were like this i felt great and it's it's good to leave on a high note like that see we we watch that very closely yeah both gary and i do who's shooting and who's shooting every day out there and and whatever but i think you're very very fortunate that you had somebody like like the clums who who took you under their wing and i would imagine if we were to talk to your wife Mm -hmm. she would explain (laughs) how much and how how kind of nuts you were about doing it and, and I mean, when you have a bunch of bows, and I'm, I would imagine that in your position, you've had a lot of boyers give you bows, and every one of those bows will shoot well for you if you stick with that one bow. Yep. But when people start bouncing around, I got a bunch, and you start bouncing around, second guessing. You're, you're right. You got to have the one that you like and that you'll continue to shoot, and yeah, it'll work. Yeah, and I, um, I think uh, probably the, you know all the things I've I've learned a ton is stick with the one and treat it like your wife, caress it, care for it, feed it, 
rocks. <laughs> Don't switch from it <laughs> because you get rid of the one, the grass is always greener, and you're stuck with, you know, no matter how hot she is, she's someone else's. I'm going to get myself in trouble. <laughs> Just keep digging <laughs> the hole, baby. Yeah, let Gary oh. speak on that. Yeah. No, I, I, no. I refuse to speak on this subject. <laughs> I'm a guide, nothing else. Uh, <laughs> but, yeah, I think uh, I think it's important <laughs> that um, you get a connection with one bow. You don't jump around too much. It's fun to fling a few arrows out of each bow and know what they what they feel like. But um, that bow has been painted rattle can three different times. I've I've got kind of a mock-up fusion on there. But no matter what, when I when I shoot it, when I'm on, it's on, and uh, yeah, it's it's, it's your it's bow, great, yeah. Uh, uh, talking about the second shot thing, um, we mentioned this earlier, Gary. We were all talking about the second shot. How many times have we seen a situation where um, a guy shoots, a gal, whatever, hunter shoots, and it doesn't go as planned, and there's a meltdown? Oh. Tell, tell the caribou story. I think that's perfect for what Brian's leading up to. <laughs> I was guiding a couple of years ago in the Northwest Territories, and uh, it was the stock went really well. The hunter missed a really easy shot, and he snapped, um, and he threw his bull, <laughs> it was, and the bull was still standing there, and it was a big bull, caribou. Um, we got lucky. He had to go back and get his bull, which could have at that time been also broken or bent up. But uh, when I saw you shoot, you, know, you took that opportunity, and with that big bull caribou, which was a gift, up there and to watch the guy throw his bull uh, his bull um yeah you kind of as a guide shake your heads once in a while you know you kind of seen everything so oh, absolutely. yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yep I've, I've held guys after crying <laughs> well personally i want to grab the bull and beat him to death but we won't go there um <laughs> yeah so go ahead i was gonna say uh, uh gary to your experience i i had this bull elk that i called in once and this is years ago bull came running in and he he i had him at like under eight yards and I have the bow at full draw and I shoot and the arrow ricochets off this little tree branch and goes into his antlers. Well, the bull just stood there and he kind of rattled its head and ran a couple of yards, but it was, just, and I, I was so focused on the miss that I didn't load another arrow and just shoot the bull. I just stood there and I was like, where's the miss? I mean, I couldn't have missed and I'm just going over and over and I'm caught up in the moment of the yeah. miss and, and missed on that second shot opportunity. That was a huge lesson because he stood there and stood there and by the time I tried to get an arrow out, I had blown lots of opportunities to, to, to shoot him with a follow-up arrow. So uh, Never give up. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Especially with a quiet bow. Well, that's when you, we were getting ready to leave. I was like, that bear was there. You got to glass and glass and glass. And, tr you know, I'm like, until you get off the hill, you got to keep looking. Cause. Oh, when you spotted it the second time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I can't obviously hiking down the hill. I couldn't, you see, can't see him. Couldn't see any, anything, but I was assuming you must've seen, cause you were, I could see you glassing mm -hmm. and I was assuming you spotted. were glassing for a good reason. So it was, cause it was like, there. And I'm looking way above. And when I immediately looked, I'm like, immediately I'm, Going back up the hill, I'm like, I can get that. So I just, uh, I think one, uh, you know, stick bow shooting, Callahan talked about yesterday. You know, a lot of guys talk about, you know, working hard and everything else. And you truly have to work harder at every level with a stick bow. Yeah. And that's not like this, I'm holier than thou thing. It's, it's just a fact. Yeah. You have to shoot more. You know, you have to definitely stocking more. You have to worry about your scent more, your noise more, because you have to get closer. Yeah. And uh, and it's a cool thing for me. Hopefully, I don't wound a bunch of stuff. And if I do, I mean, I'll just do my best. But it is definitely for me and in, in my archery career at this point, a lot cooler being able to to do yeah. that rather than just stick it at sixty yards or whatever the case may be. As far as shot, shot placement on bears, since you know. It was something that we both were a little surprised about. Where does a guy put the arrow? Where do you guys instruct a guy to 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 shoot at a bear? Well, dead center of dead center. Like I think we talked a little bit about it yesterday. Yeah, we did. And forward, if you can. So yeah. dead center of dead center. I mean, optimally, it'd be dead center and four inches forward. Mm -hmm. But when you when when you're most most people are used to shooting. With the a defined shoulder. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And you hog that shoulder. Gary and I have been on <laughs> dozens of tracks. And this, this country is not uh, real good for being able to see 
Um, there's other things that live out there that like to eat eat these kind of yeah. animals, and it, it it does become a dangerous situation when you're tracking a wounded animal in the jungle. Yeah, and some of this is thick. Point oh, point. it's Forrest Gump thick. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's thick, thick. It's like Vietnam. Yeah, like. But you hit one gum. in the, you know, I mean, even if you go dead center, even where you, you just had one arrow into him, right? Yeah. Yep. I mean, he didn't go that far. And he went uphill. He went 70, uphill. It, that was another thing, and he obviously mortally wounded mm-hmm. 75 yards. And Gary was smart. You know, I'm sure you could probably see I was pretty, I mean, I wasn't, like, doing cheetah flips, but he, I'm sure you could see I was excited. He's like, just stay here. I'm going to go get, I mean, he wasn't, you weren't, like, noticeably like, hey, dummy, stay here. But you were like, I'm going to go to the truck. That. Just chill, probably. <laughs> I was and, thinking, uh, let's go, let's go, let's go. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, but I'm going to run to the truck. You stay here, which was good because it probably, the bear, I mean, died in that period of time, and I didn't chase it off trying to follow a blood trail. Yeah. So. And bears just don't bleed. I don't yeah. care if they're hit with. I've seen them all well, last oh, yeah. week, I, 338, 300 grain bullet, and 100 yard dash. I mean, it was a good hit, regardless, not a not a spot of blood. Yeah. Um, it's we, kind of hard we, to explain until you've seen it, man. <laughs> we got lucky on the... For not being like yeah. a heart, double lung, perfect shot, it's pretty good blood. Yeah, I yeah. mean, oh, yeah. blood. sharp yeah. broadhead does that though. Right? I could it's not believe blood. that that broadhead did what it did, and I cut it open this morning. The the body and uh, it broke the rib on the on side and on the off side. It just you know just nicked them. You know, well, going plus through. it went up the mountain fifteen yards. Yeah, that was beyond 15. it and stuck into a log. And it's not like I'm shooting three hundred feet per <laughs> second with a six hundred grain arrow, right? I mean, this arrow six hundred, and I I could fart faster than this thing's going. It's like one seventy eight, <laughs> and uh, it, fifteen it, yards uphill into a log. Through what's the, your poundage? It's, it's you impressive. Shooting? Fifty, fifty six, fifty five. Which is a big, big issue when people switch over. It's going too heavy, right? Oh like, yeah, like I, I shoot fifty one, yeah, twenty six, and a lot of people think. And when I first switched over in the eighties, I bought an eighty pound longbow because <laughs> I was shooting a, a eighty some right. pound Martin Firecat. I thought, well, I got to get the same thing. That's how I learned. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's bad. It's like a four inch draw. I started like. on like a <laughs> thirty pound Samick, you know, for right. form. And uh, but the, I'm very um, obedient when it comes to um, learning with the clone. You know, I. They tell me what to do, and I do it um, yeah. when it comes to shooting. And, I, and I've had other people try and coach me, which I think I've ruffled a few feathers stating that, hey, I've got a coach, and you're not it. And I appreciate it, but I just want to have one master, and he'll he'll teach me and tell me what I need to know. And that was the one thing they were like, do not overbow yourself. You'll create snap shooting, bad form, no, no, no. And, I mean, 55 – I might it go a couple pounds heavier, but, I mean – 56 pounds feels really good to me, and I can hold for – well, you, you were t- commenting. I can hold forever with that. I mean, I can hold comfortably, not forever, but for a while with that, and it doesn't bug me, and yeah. I don't want to get to where I'm snap shooting so, or well, collapsing. We, uh, we sh- we, we're going to get off, get some get some grub in us, and head off and bear hunt some more for tonight. And uh, But one thing that I wanted to touch on, maybe not now, but, but if we have enough time before we leave, uh, we mentioned this – when we were driving around and hunting, um, some things that Gary has seen is hunting with a single pin. And we touched on it just a little bit, but we really didn't get into it much. And there was and a lot more. Ballistic turrets. And ballistic turrets. <laughs> so those are two equipment choices that we want to talk about as far as... Um, Gary's the- cooter vein comes out. <laughs> <laughs> That's that vein on your head. <laughs> we should also we should also touch on the uh, my guide last year who was attacked by a black bear. Yes, yes. yeah, and, yeah, uh, yeah. Because yeah. it's changed my behavior. My attitude this year is completely different when dealing with these bears. Like charging in after them, trying to get them to turn, and yeah, it for different. me things have changed. For yeah, sure. and you got. We all have lovely, well, sorry, Gary. We all have, except for Gary, lovely women to go back to. You don't know what he's got. <laughs> I watched what I mean. He's got six. Oh, <laughs> don't even go there. Gary gets <laughs> <laughs> No. <laughs> no. Oh, he could, wow. but he chooses not to. Oh, that's funny. All right. Well, yeah. Right. More fish. Wrap her up. Yep. Let's get back on it later. Stay right. gritty. Good. Okay. Okay, gritty friends. I hope you enjoyed that podcast. If you did, please take a moment to leave us a review on iTunes, Podbean, or Stitcher. We love reading your reviews. And connect with us on social media if you're on there. Look us up on Facebook and Instagram, and take a moment to subscribe to our YouTube channel so you can receive notifications when we upload new videos. We've got a sweet deal with Mountain Ops, 
You get 20% off on all Mountain Ops supplements, combo packs, and apparel when you type in the word gritty at checkout. If you're a hardcore elk hunter or you want to be, go to the Elk 101 website online and check them out. Our friend Corey Jacobson is killing it with some of the best elk hunting information and entertainment on the web. All right, friends, let me leave you with one other quote from Theodore Roosevelt who said, It behooves every man to remember that the work of the critic is of altogether secondary importance and that, in the end, progress is accomplished by the man who does things. We all have a choice. We can be people who do things or people who criticize the work of others. It's pretty simple, really. Get out there and do your thing. Good luck on your hunts and stay gritty. This is Ty Stubblefield, and you're listening to the Gritty Bowman. Gritty Bowman. <laughs>